In this episode, we are going to visit Helena, Montana's capital. But first, we have to get there, so enjoy the ride. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. We're still in Medora, North Dakota. Let's cook some dinner. I'm grilling some potatoes I bought at a supermarket at a small town called Cavalier and the pork chops Steve gave me in Des Moines. Actually, this is one of the best potatoes I've ever had. Someone forgot to clean the lens on the GoPro. Good morning. I already said good morning to you. Or did I? I don't remember. It's one of those mornings. Anyway, <laughs> Medora, hardly knew you. I wanted to go to that Medora musical. I've heard it's really good, but we'll be back one of these days. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. From here to Helena is about 480 miles, which is 80 miles more than my preferred daily maximum. Half a Texas, as I like to say. But it is early. We'll make it. Look at that sign coming up and the grease on the pavement. We are now in Montana. Big sky country. Now crossing the Yellowstone River, which we are going to be crisscrossing a couple more times during this part of the trip. Hmm, it is starting to get smoky. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving through Montana or Wyoming. Folks in Idaho, I'm coming all the way to the Pacific. Let me be specific. Anywhere out here would be terrific. Driving to the west in my RV is where I wanna be. I'm gonna put gas here in Forsyth because now we begin the more remote section of this trip on US 12. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west. Well, this is more or less where I pulled over, had a quick lunch. But before we continue, I'd like to tell you about Skillshare, sponsoring this episode. And Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes, so you can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. And you know, I'm always trying to learn new things, and there's a class that I wish I would have taken years ago called Creativity Unleashed. Discover. Own and share your voice online by Nathaniel Drew. And it is always good to further develop one's own voice as a content creator or whatever it is you want to pursue. So yeah, Skillshare, really useful resource. They have all kinds of courses, writing, music, photography, also business, productivity. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. And after that, it is only around $10 a month. And I want to thank them for sponsoring this episode. Well, I took a break since I had to change the, the, the memory card on the GoPro anyways and uh, well, had a quick lunch I reheated some of those uh, pork chops I did yesterday delicious by the way courtesy of our friend from uh, uh, Des Moines, Steve and, uh, and uh, I haven't been in, in such a desolate piece of highway a very long time. It's kind of bumpy. Mm -hmm. 
it is getting increasingly smokier. And this is the thing. We're here in late August 2020 and there are wildfires raging all over the West, particularly Colorado, California, Oregon. We're surrounded by them. I mean, we could be surrounded by beautiful mountains and we wouldn't know. It does give the atmosphere a special, unique quality. Also, a uniquely bad air quality. You can smell it in the air. The GPS said there was a gas station in this town, and maybe I missed it, but I don't see it. You think the GPS lied? Luckily, I still have a quarter tank and five gallons in the trunk. Running on fumes, we arrive in Harlow Town. Let's park right here, make sure we know where we're going. No kidding. Oh, it's hot out there. We've got two more hours, a little over two more hours, and this is probably gonna be like the final leg of the trip. It looks like the smoke might be clearing, which is actually an excellent idea. I was able to find the... It, it, it's like, a, you know, like, like the satellite map, but it's for smoke, not for clouds. And uh, it, it's, it, it, apparently it's like, there, there's like a dry cold front coming down and uh, it's moving all the smoke so as you can see it's a little sunnier now so um, I'm hopeful I'm very hopeful and I was gonna boondog it tonight but uh, it is too hot to be boondogging let's face it and uh, I mean we're not we're not here to rough it we're here to, to glamp it so uh, it's kind of pricey but I, I made a reservation at the KUA in Helena and uh, that's where we're staying. Look at that, the sun's coming out. Pretty soon we're gonna be able to see into the horizon. Because I was told this was a very beautiful drive, but as you've noticed, it's been mostly smoke. We're on the final stretch. It's been a long day all day driving but sometimes you have to put in the miles and today is one of those days i mean we've driven more than halfway across the great state of montana the fourth largest state by area after alaska texas and california yet the third least densely populated and you can tell not too many people along this route i imagine on a clear sunny day this would have been a spectacular drive and still, in this dense smoke, it is not bad, but you can imagine. An eternity later, here we are, arriving in Helena, and we're gonna stay at the KOA. Well, we made it to Helena, Montana. And as you can see, we're getting a, a glimpse of blue sky here. I'm hopeful that the smoke, you know, will dissipate. <laughs> One can only hope, right? And I was uh, talking to my neighbor here and uh, he told me that there's a car wash a couple of miles south because both Minitini and the Colorado, uh, they really need it, so... Well, it's been an all-day drive. Let me turn this off real quick so you can hear me. It is time once again for an RV cooking show. I have some shrimp here that has been, has been in my freezer for about a month. I bought it in Georgia. I'm gonna make them here just... Ooh, everything down there. It's full of dust. <sighs> Probably when I took that dirt road in North Dakota. Maybe it came through one of the vents, who knows. In any case, while the shrimp thaws in the warm water inside the sink, let's make the sauce, like a sofrito. First, we chop an onion. And the green pepper. Garlic, lots of minced garlic. 
I've been boiling some water, so we're gonna make some basmati rice. It takes about 11 minutes and you cook it like a pasta, draining the water at the end. Olio di oliva, and uh, let's saute all this stuff. Salt, pepper, green peas, perhaps a little too much. Golden Vino Seco cooking wine, generously. Tiny little bit of cumin, at least twice as much oregano. And paprika, lots of paprika. Tomato sauce, you know, the basic sofrito ingredients, and sweet asha. Let's move it around and then we're gonna add the shrimp. And uh, we're running out of gas, this thing is really not... Yeah, RV ranges usually don't heat up as much. Boiling the way I was expecting it to. I'm gonna add a little more of, uh, of this stuff. And as soon as it starts boiling, I'm gonna add the shrimp. And the shrimp, you know, it's ready in like two or three minutes. So. A little more salt. We'll drain the rice and add a dash of olive oil. A little bit of rice. And our shrimp grill. Well, hopefully tomorrow we'll have a clearer day, but... As much as I'd like to have a clear blue sky day, the smoke and the particulate in the atmosphere make for some phenomenal sunsets, and I think we're gonna be able to witness one of those. Can't wait to start exploring tomorrow. morning actually uh, but uh, you know things had to be done I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go see if I can get a car wash and if I can get a good car wash on, on the truck tomorrow morning I'm gonna take a mini teeny which is super dirty and it looks like the the smoke is uh, is blowing away yes we've got blue skies kind of sort of not the clearest of days but much better since this is the state capital, I think it would be appropriate to start by the capital building. Well, here we have it, the Montana State Capitol. I do believe this is the back, so let's walk around to the front. The sandstone and granite building was completed in 1902, with wing annexes added between 1909 and 1912. Oh my gosh, I am shocked! There's construction going on here! In the line of duty, dedicated to officers from every law enforcement agency across the state of Montana. Hmm, Governor's Mansion. That would be neat to see. If you recall, North Dakota was under construction too, so who knows, it may be a 2020 thing. I wish I could fly the drone because I believe the garden reads Montana 2020. 
The equestrian bronze sculpture is none other than Thomas Francis Mager, an Irish revolutionary and Union Brigadier General in the American Civil War. Beautiful city surrounded by mountains. Kind of bummed out, it is all under renovations, but I'm sure it'll be beautiful when it's finished. The sculpture at the top of the cupola is called Montana, sometimes also affectionately called Lady Liberty. A giant metal bison skull adorns the front of the Historical Society Museum. The statue, symbol of the prose, depicting a professional rodeo rider, stands by the side here. This seems to be the entrance to the museum. Apparently they do offer tours, but not today. Today is Sunday. Our timing impeccable as usual. Here's a teepee and the bell. A replica of the Liberty Bell. An uncracked Liberty Bell. Very nice, but very quiet nearly deserted on a Sunday here. Turn left onto East 6th Avenue. All right, next we're gonna go see the original uh, governor's mansion, which is uh, just under a mile away. I could have walked, but I don't feel it. Nice residential neighborhood. Here we have it, the original governor's mansion. Well, here it is. This is all I can show you because it is closed. Pretty cool neighborhood. I mean, look at that house and all the surrounding mountains. Victorian architecture. Alright, let's continue. Let's go to Reader's Alley, which is the oldest surviving part of the city. Reader's Alley, probably the oldest uh, area of the city here. Pioneer cabin here, Helena's oldest documented dwelling, and it is closed. Yeah, I think I think this is like the oldest uh, area here of the city. The only thing it's it is Sunday, so all these uh, businesses, you know, they seem to be closed. Like this cotton top pastries, but, you know, we're just gonna... Yeah, apparently they do offer tours, but only Monday through Friday, and they have it decorated with period furniture and such. It would have been nice to see inside, you know. I don't know if it is uh, like a museum. Apparently, and you know, they probably have more information that now I have, I'm gonna have to look up online, of course, but private entrance, garden area, appointment only. Okay, so I, I won't trespass, just in case, you know, I don't wanna break uh, any rules. But yeah, this is that. Um, Pioneer Cabin, and this is the Yeehaw Cabin, right here.
But as you can see, it is an actual business. It is not like a museum or anything like that. But check this out, this Chinook RV. That's really cute. Let me tell you, wouldn't it be cool to like restore one of these? <laughs> well, let's check out uh, Reader's Alley here, which uh, apparently on a normal day would be bustling with activity, right? Well, today it is completely deserted. Is it Helena Montana Visitor Center? Maybe they have tourist information down here. Yes. Built in 1864, it is one of the oldest cabins in Montana. And it exemplifies a typical miner's residence in the gold rush era. And uh, I wish all this stuff was open today, Sunday. Reader's Alley here was built in the 1870s by a Pennsylvania brick and stone mason called Louis Reader. And actually, it being deserted as it is today, it is kind of easier to imagine this place in the 1870s with all the miners hanging out. Can you imagine? Morelli Bridge here dates back to 1893 and it's considered the oldest timber bridge still in use in Montana. I've never seen so many grasshoppers in my life. It's like a, like a grasshopper invasion all over the place, especially in North Dakota and here in Montana. Oh yes, it is a very picturesque uh, area here, if, if eerily deserted. I like that all of these uh, historic buildings are being used as actual businesses like attorneys and uh, barber shops and uh, counselors and that sort of thing. And it looks like this would make a wonderful brewery here <laughs> with the view of, of this mountain here. Helena, definitely not a, a Sunday town. <laughs> That's for sure. At least not at, uh, what well, is it's 12.37 noon right now, mountain time. All right, let's go by downtown. I think it's just a couple of miles walking that way. Did I say miles? I meant to say blocks, but I decided to drive anyway. It is kind of solitary up there by Reader's Alley. Let me tell you something, that brewery looks very tempting. Tell you what, I caved in. I'm gonna go for it. I haven't been to a good brewery since Waynesville, I think. And that was like a month ago. It is called Single Malt IPA. I kind of like the scotch reference, so I decided to try it. And the Blackfoot Brewer here seems nice. Not very busy on a Sunday at 1 p.m. Now, let's just walk around. The only way to truly get to know a city. Cool looking downtown here, and uh, they have another brewery here. Under other circumstances, I would have got, I would have gone in there too, but there doesn't seem to be any food in any of these breweries. So I'm gonna, if I can't find any food, you know, I have some some shrimp back in the trailer. The Windbag Saloon. Maybe I'll have lunch there. All right, had an enchilada, which is not what I usually have. 
but I was feeling adventurous and uh, now I'm just gonna walk off my enchilada. Let's explore the town a little bit. Well, the good thing about all this uphill climb is that on the way down, you know, it's gonna be easier, right? Very, very cool looking neighborhood here. Definitely different. In hindsight, I probably should have gone in the opposite direction, which happens to be the more historic part of town. But this part is pretty historic too. Here's the municipal court and the Myrna Loy Performing Arts Center, formerly the historic county jail. All of a sudden, you turn a corner and it doesn't look all that nice. Actually, let's go back to Broadway. Pretty cool. Sometimes it's even interesting just to walking around the residential neighborhoods. Some houses seem a little run down, but it seems very quiet. All right, let's, let's cross the street right here. Because I wanna go to this hill up here. Maybe we can see like a, like a panoramic view of the city. But yeah, pure, purely a residential neighborhood right here. One curious thing I've seen, uh, you know, a lot of little slogans written either on houses, front porches, or on a window. I did see something like that, something similar, like a lot of, you know, the current situation related slogans. I think it was in Alabama, like, it gets better, you know, you're not alone, that kind of thing. Beautiful houses here, right next to this park which is where I'm going. It's a, it's like a hill. And I saw another YouTuber who did a video here and, uh, and apparently you get a, a beautiful view of, of the city from the top of this hill. So that's where I'm going. Yeah, what's up with all the grasshoppers? I've never seen so many grasshoppers in my life. They're everywhere. So it has to be some kind of infestation. Look at them. Oh wow, look at that. We're not even like halfway up yet. This is amazing. I'm so glad like the smoke is starting to clear out. I mean, over there, there's still a little bit of it, but yeah. I'm a little out of breath. Could be the high altitude. And there's the Capitol building. We're almost at the top. That would be Mount Helena to the west. It would have been really cool to climb to the top of that one. And then to the northwest, the Cathedral of St. Helena and to the left, the historic Algeria Shrine Temple, now also known as the Helena Civic Center. It is a relatively small city. I'm sure you could almost walk the whole thing in one day. Well, this was cool coming up here to this hilltop and be able to see like the whole northern side of the city really and um, now let's go back and I'm gonna try to stop by the cathedral the St. Helen Cathedral which probably gives the city its name right Helena St. Helen and uh, we have another trail here 
going down. Lots of people have this, uh, you know, they look like like solar panels. But I wonder if there's some kind of heater. I mean, they certainly look like solar panels, don't they? Yeah, very nice, Helena. And check it out, this is a, it is a Winnebago. And a VW van. That's really, really cool. Eurovan camper. You know, some of the houses, very, very nice. Many people have like their own little trailers like this A-liner here. Here's a cool small neighborhood park. That's where we're going next, the Guardian of the Gulch Fire Tower, painted on Helena's official symbol and built in 1886. I'm just training, training for, for Glacier National Park. Ironically, the tower was nearly destroyed by an arson attack in 2014, so it is to be demolished and rebuilt at some point. Nice views from up here, too. Now let's figure out how to get back down from here. I may have to retrace my steps. Yeah, all the, all the grasshoppers are a little unsettling, but it is what it is. I have no idea where I'm going, but this has to go somewhere, right? Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go back the same way we came. Well, this was unexpected here. Here we have this big propeller, and an anchor, and a bell. Well, it is called Anchor Park, and it is actually a memorial to the four ships that have been called USS Helena. All right, there's the Colorado. Let's head back to the, to the KOA. Actually, before we get back to the KOA, let's stop by the cathedral real quick. There's again the Algeria Shrine Temple. This is like the valet parking, so let's park by the front instead. The Gothic cathedral was modeled after the Vatevkirche in Vienna, Austria. Construction began in 1908, but it wasn't finished and consecrated until 1924.
gotten really smoky. morning on the road again but first let's do a little rv wash it is about time here we are montana avenue car wash and there is only one oversized bay Patience, Robert. Patience. Some of it won't come off, but it is definitely better than it was. Let's go towards the mountains. The Rocky Mountains, no less. So this is how it's supposed to look. And this is what we've got today. All right, let's continue. Oh, nice lake. Let's see if we can stop. This one is called Nevada Lake. And even though we've been barely an hour on the road, it is always good to stop for a few minutes, stretch your legs, break up the trip into several shorter legs. you see the faint silhouette of the mountains. It is a huge cow. Another lake, Salmon Lake. I'm riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be. And guys, I'm free in my RV. I well, took a nice long break here, even made some coffee right here next to Summit Lake. In any case, let's hit the road. We still have over an hour to go, believe it or not. Riding in my RV, my RV. 
wherever I want to be Because I'm free yeah. Break it down Riding, riding oh, Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Oh, cause I'm free In my RV And riding, riding, riding Riding, riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because yeah, I'm free in my RV. On the next episode, we'll explore the striking beauty of Glacier and the Going to the Sun Road. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, cause I'm free in my RV. Riding, riding in